Today we're going to look at the special segments of a triangle. And the first segment that we're going to take a look at is the altitude of a triangle. The altitude or height of a triangle is a line segment drawn from any vertex of the triangle perpendicular to an ending in the line that contains the opposite side of the triangle. So if we look at the first triangle, which is acute. If I want to draw the altitude of this triangle, well, looking at this as the opposite side of this vertex, I can draw the altitude so that it is perpendicular. Looking at this vertex, the side that I'm going to draw the altitude here in orange, it would have to be a line perpendicular. And then from this vertex, this last vertex, I'm going to draw the altitude to this opposite side. That would be drawn so it's perpendicular. So as you can see, the three altitudes of a triangle do intersect. And in our exploration, we will see um, where, depending on the type of triangle, acute, right, obtuse, where this point of intersection is, and also we're going to learn the names of those points. But in looking at each one of these triangles, drawing the altitude from this vertex to this side, the height would be right here. So looking at this side, the altitude would be from this vertice, and I want to draw it straight down but in order to have it drawn perpendicular, I need to extend this side. So drawing it straight down, this would be the altitude to this side here of the obtuse triangle. In the right triangle, since we have a right angle, that means that these two sides are perpendicular. So this would be the height if I'm looking at this side here as the base. We're not going to do a proof today, but I wanted to give you the statement of reason that does go along with the altitude so that when we get to the proof, we can just go ahead and fill it out. So it's given that B is an altitude, or BD. If BD is an altitude, then that means it's perpendicular to the side that it's drawn to, so it would be perpendicular to AC. So given that it's an altitude, I can write BD is perpendicular a, C. And that is because an altitude of a triangle is perpendicular to the side it's drawn to. And now we're going to take a look at the construction of the altitude. So in example number one, we're going to construct altitude BD in triangle ABC. So given that we're going to construct altitude BD, it's going to come from vertex B. So recall the perpendicular line construction, because if I were to get rid of, take this white pen, get rid of side AB and side CB, this is the same construction as a line perpendicular to AC through point B, which we've done. So to do that construction, bringing those lines back, the first thing we did was we put the compass point on the point through which I need to draw the perpendicular line, and we made an arc. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an arc. Through those two points of intersection of the arc and the segment, we then made an X. Now since point B is on the top, I'm going to put the X below the segment. So placing my compass at this point, I'm going to slide it in, make an arc with the same radius. I'm going to move it over to this point of intersection, and I'm going to draw another arc. And now through these two points, 
right here and right here. I'm going to use my straight edge and draw a straight line. Well, actually, I'll use the line tool. Now, to finish this construction, we need to take our eraser and go back and make the, that part of the line that's outside of the triangle dotted. And we do that because in altitude, the altitude of the triangle, which I was constructing BD, so I need to label this point D, is only the part of the segment that's within the triangle. And that is the construction of altitude BD in triangle ABC. On the back side, we're going to take a look at the median of a triangle. And to define that, a median of a triangle is a line segment that joins any vertex of the triangle. So that means, again, I, since there's three vertices, I can draw three medians to the midpoint of the opposite side. Now, in our exploration, we're going to have to construct the midpoint. So if I wasn't constructing, I could just make a point where I think the midpoint is and draw my line. Now, to get that midpoint by construction, that was opening up your compass and putting the points at the ends and making those overlapping arcs. And through that line, that gives us the midpoint. This is the perpendicular bisector construction. So to get the midpoint, we want to do the perpendicular bisector construction. So later on we do proofs. When we're given a median, that tells us, since a median is drawn to the midpoint on the opposite side, that D is the midpoint of AB. So AD would be congruent to BD. And that is because a median of a triangle is drawn to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we're going to take, again, our special segments are the altitude of a triangle, the median of a triangle. Next is the angle bisector of a triangle. Just as an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles, an angle bisector of a triangle also divides an angle into two congruent angles. So to go over again the angle bisector construction with your compass point here, we start by making an arc, and then we put our compass points here to make the X. So the angle bisector goes through that point of intersection. And remember, we can draw because the angle bisector can go through any one of the three angles. We can draw three angle bisectors. The perpendicular bisector of a triangle, this was within your spiral. So a perpendicular bisector of a triangle intersects the side at its midpoint because it is a bisector and is perpendicular to the side because it is the perpendicular bisector. So to construct a perpendicular bisector with the compass point here, again, we make the two intersecting arcs, and then I draw a line through these two points of intersection. So here's one perpendicular bisector of the side where I've noted the endpoints. Now it's not going to go through the vertex necessarily as we're just, again, through this midpoint, we're dividing that segment into two congruent segments. So let's take a look at example number 
two. Given triangle ABC with base AF EDC, we have median BF. So let's highlight the median BF and write down what it does. So the median BF, a median gives us a midpoint. So F is the midpoint of AC. So that means AF is congruent to CF. Next, we have altitude BD. So altitude BD gives us some perpendicular segments, which I don't see any of these statements written with a perpendicular symbol. So now I want to take a look at the angles that are formed by the perpendicular segments because they are right angles and all right angles are congruent. So this is a right angle and this is a right angle. So I know that angle BDC is congruent to angle BDA. And last, BE bisects ABC. So I'm going to highlight BE in green and the angle which it bisects. And I have this angle here and this angle here. That angle is following along the outside, the sides that form A, B, E is congruent to C, B, E. So looking at the statements on the left, I'm going to see if any of those statements match up with the ones that I have written. And that would be statement Four. CF is congruent to FA. So now we're actually going to do the exploration. So if you would like to do the exploration to again discover these relationships we're about to fill in within the table, please see me and I'll give you the packet. But once you do the exploration, we will talk about and fill in the four bullet points for the names of these points of concurrency. Now concurrent lines are three or more lines that intersect at the same point. So each of the special segments that we've learned or talked about above in the notes are concurrent at a point with special characteristics in our triangle. So the point of concurrency for our perpendicular bisectors is called the circumcenter. The point of concurrency for the angle bisectors is called the in-center. The point of concurrency for the altitudes is called the ortho-center. And the point of concurrency for the three medians is called the centroid. Now two out of the four share certain relationships and the other two out of the four share a certain relationship. The first star is that the in center in centroid, that point of concurrency for your angle bisectors and your medians always lies or always lie in the interior region of a triangle. So you can remember, in center always lies inside. Below, both the circumcenter and orthocenter, they share a relationship. Both of those points are inside the triangle when the triangle is acute. They're both outside of the triangle or in the exterior region when the triangle is obtuse. And they lie on the triangle when the triangle is right.